All right, so something that's going to take our attention for the rest of this hour, basically. We're going to be joined by four different guests. We, of course, will break for headline news. But let's start the conversation, because I know there are going to be a lot of opinions coming through on this one. The Minerals Council of South Africa has taken issue with those who say the mining industry is an epicenter of COVID-19 in South Africa. The council says these assertions are not only inaccurate, but serve to spread fear among mine workers and communities in which they reside. There are now 679 confirmed COVID-19 cases at various mines countrywide. There are more than 230,000 miners that are currently back at work in South Africa. The unions say they're concerned about the steady increase in, conf uh, in, in these confirm confirmed infections. But let's, let's start the discussion and we'll keep taking it forward this morning. So our first two guests that are joining us, we have AMCU President Joseph Matunjwa. It's always a pleasure to have you. And of course, Dr. Tutula Belfour, who is the Head of Health at the Minerals Council South Africa. So to our first two guests, a very good morning to you and thanks so much for being with us. Morning, Hi, good morning again. and good morning. So let's let's begin by getting both of your opinions. What what do you uh, take issue to with what we are calling a narrative about mines being an epicenter of COVID nineteen in South Africa? Perhaps, Mr. Matunjwa, we can begin with you. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Perfectly. We can hear you fine. Uh, are you able to hear Thank us? Thank you very much. Good. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think any place in South Africa, it's a potential to be infested by this COVID-19. I think it, to suggest that the mine is an only place that uh, incubates such disease, I think that is, is very much misinforming uh, to many people. It's just a matter of time that it spread to other spaces or any other workplaces. That is what I could say for now. Yeah. I, I'm going to ask the, the same question to Dr. Tutula uh, Belfort. What do you feel? I mean, this narrative that mines are the epicenter of the virus. Talk to us about this. Um, our uh, approach, Lien, was to try and put context, you know, to the number of cases that we report on a daily basis. Uh, because the mining industry decided to be very transparent and, uh, 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 you know, ensure that statistics is available on a daily basis. What we are saying is that in mining, there's been a lot of testing that has been done. You have mines which um, tested, you know, the whole population and they would then find the cases. And uh, if you then, it's not comparing apples with apples, if you are saying that we are an epicenter, because again, the mine workers live in the community. Most of them live in the community. And therefore, if you have those of um, people who have the disease, miners, it uh, suggests that maybe if you were to test more in the community, then you would find the same. Uh, again, we do not uh, believe that you know, we should uh, stigmatize the spread. You know, conditions, diseases, epidemics start somewhere and they then spread. We can't all be looking at China. You know, you have infected us with this. So there is that natural progression of the disease. And in our case, we are saying because of the requirements, you know, to ensure that, uh, you know, the, the people are not infected, there is more screening, there is more testing, and therefore you will find. And even in the communities, if you were to go and test, you would find that there are a lot of people who are positive right now because the disease is uh, circulating very much at the moment in South Africa um, to the extent that uh, it's just that the national uh, uh, laboratory services cannot keep up with the number of tests. But certainly there are a lot of uh, uh, infections now in the community too. Yeah. I mean, one would, one would look at what you're saying and see the logic in it because uh, when these miners are reporting to work, they are being screened, they are being tested. So, you know, they, they're at the, 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 the forefront of being tested and this, this is happening. But if you go to other communities, it's not happening. The testing, the, um, the, the, the screening on a daily basis, 
it's not happening. So it, it would make sense that out of a total of, you know, as we mentioned in the introduction, about 230,000 miners going back to work, about 679 have got coronavirus or have uh, uh, shown positive results. I mean, this may be a much greater number elsewhere in the country because testing is not necessarily being done in these communities. Doctor, would you agree with that assertion? Um, you are right that we have a higher testing rate. Uh, I think, however, it also says, you know, to, for us as a country to um, really make progress to defeat the disease, we need to work collaboratively. And therefore, the fact that, uh, you know, there are lower testing rates in the communities means that we need to collaborate far more with the immediate, you know, our peri mining districts so that we don't, uh, for instance, test the, the father, if it is the father, the breadwinner, or the uh, the mother worker, and then uh, the rest of the family, you know, is not attended to. So there is far more collaboration uh, that we need to do to ensure that it is a, a, a an approach which looks at the, the the whole district because no one is the better off because you know uh, there are there's better. Uh, testing, for instance, or screening, you know, in, in a certain uh, part of that uh, province, so, or, or, or even the district. So oh. you, you, you are right. We believe that, uh, yes, we are testing more, but if we are to do this together as a country, then we also need to collaborate more with the immediate districts. Certainly. And also, I mean, I come back to you, Mr. Matunjwa, in terms of, of, of this stigma that is associated unfortunately with coronavirus and you know there's of course been um, reports of clusters of infections at various mines and communities are now fearful of these mine workers and that they will bring COVID-19 into their areas. Um, the response to these concerns? Yeah uh, I mean let's go back. I, I think uh, the mining itself it never had a good history. I mean from you can go as late 1800s uh, during the discovery of gold uh, in the big hole. More than 4,000 workers got sick, killed by diseases in the mines uh, during the times of Cecil Rhodes. And then the, the list is endless. Uh, recently was the uh, silicosis cases uh, uh, that even today some of the workers have been paid. Hence, AMCO uh, written to these companies on the 5th of March, requesting them for an agent coronavirus summit to sit down and discuss how can we soften the blow if this coronavirus enter to our workspaces. But unfortunately, because mine is not designed <laughs> to be very human, I mean, to people, the history speaks itself. I mean, the issue of, uh, I mean, regulation, we had to drag the, uh, the, the, the government to court. We have to drag these minds to court screaming as a little child. I mean, you could see that the issue of safety is still much secondary. Currently, what we are facing, some of these minds, if not all of them, they don't want to disinfect the hostels currently. The issue of so social distancing is still an issue, even though we do have regulations. I mean, the, the sweating underground, the, 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 the issuing of the face mask is still an issue. So there are so many challenges of which, at the end of the day, mine workers will be affected and surely they will be stigmatized. I mean, because they are cramped in the hostels, they are in a one space, they are easily been detected, they can be easily identified that Joseph Matunja is working at that particular mine and now is positive. And uh, currently we've been calling to these mines to, 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 to conduct a universal testing of which they are very much reluctant, they don't want, because it's too expensive, I mean, to test. They say they will only test when a person has been screened and been detected that the temperature is high, of which the issue of screening by its own or on, on its own is not sufficient currently. Yeah. Otherwise, this mine is going to close down. This shaft is going to close down. We call, uh, uh, I mean, upon these mines that they need to embark on a universal testing and they can set up their own laboratories. They've got money. It's not that they are, they are pleading poverty. It's just a matter of it's eating from its, uh, what's the name, its 
pro I mean, profit. profit. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, we're going to pause the interview for now. We need to get our news headlines. We're also going to, uh, in a short while, introduce two of our other guests. We've got uh, Noom President that will be joining us, as well as Welenzima Vavi from Saftu. So uh, a, a robust discussion coming your way here on the program. But let's quickly update you with the news headlines.